This is the black pot. AKA Kuku show them away with speak truth to power. Now here we don't criticize, but if we must criticize, we'd only just criticize to build and not to destroy. That is why we say we are in the service of God and country. This is the voice of the people, and the voice of the people is the voice of God. From the news reel. We always endeavor to keep it real. This is the voice of the people. This is the black pot. Now, the very first story we are looking at today is taken from Ghana Web, and it says, Dollarize Ghana's economy to curb city depreciation. And this is coming from one Dr. Kwachi. Dr. Kwachi. Dollarize Ghana's economy to curb city depreciation. Dr. Kwachi. And I read it. Dr. John Kwachi, Director of Research at the Institute of Economic Affairs, IEA, has suggested adopting the dollar as Ghana's currency to stabilize the economy. Stabilizing the economy is not rocket science. If we feel we cannot maintain the city, let us abandon it and adopt the dollar. Let's dollarize the economy, he said. Dr. Kwachi, who suggested this on Saturday during a discussion on an Accra-based television station, however, said that the dollarization of the economy should be a temporary measure until it rebounds, after which Ghana can create its currency. Dollarization is when a country begins to recognize the U.S. dollar as a medium of exchange or a legal tender alongside or in place of its domestic currency. Dollarization normally occurs when the local currency has become unstable and begun to lose its usefulness as a medium of exchange for market transactions. Yeah. My brother, my sister, this man speaking is a colonialist. This man speaking has lost the good sense of Pan-Africanism. This man called Dr. John Kwache has descended so lowly into the echelons of colonialism and imperialism does he understand what it means to say the currency for a nation the currency for a nation has the same value as the national flag of the nation to ever think about abandoning that is the word abandoning your national flag is selling out your country for cheap and abandoning it like the Titanic, allowing it to sink into the deepest abyss. I am so disappointed. Now, this man is supposed to be a think tank, right? IEA, Dr. John Kwache. These are the people who owe allegiance to the West. These are the people who will sell out their own country. My brother, my sister, listen to what Dr. John Kwachi is saying, our city has dwindled so low, inflation is so rife, it has become almost useless. For that matter, can we abandon it and dollarize the economy? It's in the same vein as saying, please, let's allow the West to recolonize us. Now, when a country gains independence, the very first thing it does, in fact, is simultaneous. It's a flag and a currency. True or false? When a nation gains independence, the first thing it does is to grab a new flag. Number two, a new currency. And some of the time, it even changes its name. In other words, it's dissociating itself in total right from the head all the way down to the treble my brother my sister from the colonialists the imperialists i am so disappointed a man like this when you look at him he's not a little child he's grown at least 
He would have grown up in the days of Kwame Nkrumah. If not, he would have read a lot about the ideologies of Kwame Nkrumah. The man who is seen as the foremost African, whether you like it or not. My brother, my sister, John Kwachi is not a kindergarten boy. John Kwachi is not a little secondarian. Dr. John Kwachi, he's supposed to be a learned man. I am so disappointed. These are the people who will sell all of us into slavery, all in the name of keeping a certain animal called the economy. My brother, I prefer a very weak Ghanaian currency to a very strong non-Ghanaian currency on the soils of Ghana. What a shame. To some people, it's all about bread and butter. They have no sense of loyalty. No sense of respect and independence. How can you chase out the British? And then you want the British pound to come and reign in your country. In this sense, they want the American dollar. How did the Americans keep their dollar afloat? How did they do it? Instead of fighting corruption in the nation that has punctured so many holes in the nation's purse. My brother, my sister, you are thinking about cosmetizing things. This is what is known as cosmeticism. Can I repeat it? Cosmeticism. Hey, you have the problem. You don't deal with the root cause of the problem. What you are dealing with, simply symptoms. That is called cosmeticism. You are applying cosmetics on a festering soul. It's a shame. My brother, my sister. Now, let me take you a trip to Zimbabwe. Where one of my mentors, Robert Mugabe, lived. I was chosen, handpicked, my brother, my sister, as the tourism, international tourism ambassador for Zimbabwe in the days of Robert Mugabe. My brother, I was crowned as such. I was supposed to trumpet the good of Zimbabwe. At the time I entered Zimbabwe, I couldn't even find the Zimbabwean dollar. You know why? Because the whole West had slapped a certain kind of restrictions. My brother, my sister, on Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe couldn't import. Zimbabwe could not do business with the West. And the African Union played the game so dumb. African nations couldn't come together to support an ailing African nation. No. They all dissociated themselves from Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe had no other option in that case but to fall on the American dollar. I found some of the dirtiest dollar notes in the world right there in Zimbabwe. I was so ashamed that I went into the market to buy tomatoes and I had to pay in the American dollar in Zimbabwe. The Zimbabwean dollar was worse than a toilet paper. A man like Mugabe did all he could to stand by the Zimbabwean dollar. The Pan-Africanist that he was, at a point, they even had one million Zimbabwean dollar notes, the highest in the world. My brother, my sister, it all couldn't save Zimbabwe because the rest of Africa, my brother, my sister, had thrown Robert Mugabe under the running bus. They had thrown Mugabe right in front of the lion like an ox to be gored. In the case of Mugabe, my brother, my sister, your guess is as good as mine. But where we live in a country, yes, inflation is high. The Ghana city is the worst performing currency in the whole of Africa right now. But does that call for the selling out of our dignity, loyalty, and even our heritage? Do you understand what it means to say independence? Do you understand what it means to say the national anthem, the pledge? So because of hunger, you should sell out. Go into the Bible and read the story of the man who sold out his bed right just for food. That is what John What's his name? John Kwachi is. I am so angry from when I saw this one two days ago. 
I told myself, listen, the so-called think tanks we have in this country are beginning to become so, so garrulous for nothing. In fact, they are becoming something that I don't want to say on radio. They don't think upstairs now. They think from the stomach. I leave it here. Now the next thing I would like to look at, and I need you to come with me, and let's look at this one very, very carefully. Mm. Things are happening in our nation. My brother, my sister, I asked you to come along. So we'll look at this very, very seriously. Now I'm looking at this one also coming from Ghana Web, and it says, shouldn't he be arrested or investigated? See, if I can, on hopes in Ado, yes, dynamite claims. Dynamite claims. Have you heard about any dynamites? Have you heard about any dynamites? Should we go into the story? I read, host of Kokroko on Peace FM, Kwame Sefakai, has called on security agencies to arrest and investigate former NPP member Hobson Adoye for claiming that the ruling party used dynamites to intimidate voters in the Volta region during the 2016 general elections. Now, during a panel discussion on the show on Friday, May 10, 2024, Sifakain, who expressed doubts over Adoye's claims, said he should be arrested and investigated. Shia, crazy. Have you seen dynamite being blasted before? When the Tetequashi interchange was being constructed, they used dynamite. And when the dynamite was uh, to be set off, they announced it about a week ahead, giving a specific time and date. Those of us living within and about two kilometers away from this that perimeter felt the impact you can't joke with even the smallest of dynamites and he is claiming to have set off dynamites he should be arrested or called to show where he set off the dynamite where did you get it did you buy it was it given to you he added they say when the fish comes out of water and tells you that the crocodile sleeps with one eye open you must believe it after all you are not an aquatic animal my brother Kai is asking some very important questions he said where did he get the dynamite from did he buy it he should tell us where did the UP tradition people get the bombs to bomb Kwame Nkrumah? Bombs worse than dynamites. At a time that explosives of that nature were not even popular. They got that. When it comes to politics, my brother, there's nothing impossible. I'm not going to hold brief for Opsina Doye. And I'm going to get to the case properly. Hear me now. They went all the way to Hufe Boanye in the Ivory Coast. Who had bombs shipped in all the way from wheresoever. And they gave these bombs to the UP apologists. Who couldn't defeat Kwame Nkrumah in any election. They felt that the best way to remove him was by violence. They bombed Nkrumah night and day. Just two years after Nkrumah had won power in 1959, they were already planning assassination attempts. Somebody said Nkrumah stayed for too long and he decided to establish what was known as a one-party state. By 1959, can you tell me, was there a one-party state? Two years after Kwame Nkrumah had become president of this nation, in 1959, the British, the white Englishman, who was the IGP at the time, Commissioner of Police, earmarked 
some people, including Ar Aram Ponsa and Apalu, Modesto Apalu, as people who were planning the assassination of a new leader of the nation. Could this have been attributed to the one party state? My brother, your enemy would always create a certain reason to hate you. When you are swimming, he will tell you that you are creating dust in his eyes. When you are asleep, he would say that you are running on top of his roof. He can't sleep. May I go deeper? Hear me now, brethren. I am so ashamed of Hope Sinadoye. And I've said it time and again. This guy is so vindictively shameless. You want that word again? I said he's so vindictively shameless. When you were with Nana Kofuado, everything was pomp and proper. Everything was good. I remember Hope Sinadoye, the same Hope Sinadoye. Claiming that he ensured victory for the NPP in the Volta region. And that he blocked all the loopholes in the area. Today, the same Adoye is saying that, oh, we actually used dynamites to frighten my own Voltarians. We sent them home early to go and eat Akpale and sleep. My God. What a vindictively shameless guy. When you were with Nana Kufuado, everything was okay. Cream and proper. My God have mercy. Today you are falling out with him. Vindictively. You are bringing all these things. I am not going to say whether this is true or false. But it is coming from the mouth of a man who has become bitter and vindictive. A man who claimed he was sacked from the party on his birthday. I feel for you. But that does not mean that you must be bitter and vindictive. My brother, it hurts me when politicians refuse to tell the truth until they are sacked. When politicians refuse to be loyal to the nation, but they give their loyalty to their dirty political parties. Today, Adoye is going around bragging that the national security cannot touch him if i were the national security we would pick him up as soon as possible my brother for all the rots he's going about spreading you intimidated the people of the volta region the volta region you claim you're coming from you sat down for your party to frighten the people with dynamites. And today you still claim that you are a Voltarian. You are a cheap, useless Voltarian. If I were Togby, I would call you and do a human sacrifice with you immediately to pacify the gods of Nogopok, satisfy the gods of Togby Charlie. You are a disgrace to the people. How can you sit down and allow your own people, the Voltarians, to be intimidated with dynamites. All because of power. Adoye, shut up. The next thing I want to look at, and I want to just look at something here very quickly, very, very quickly. I think it's something of interest, and I need you to come along. So we look at it. This one is coming from Peace FM and it says, Ioko has become the headquarters of corruption. They wanted to kill Cecilia the past case. And this is from a man called Adam Bona. Now, this was carried in our news just before the urban blend took center stage today. And I read, Security analyst Dr. Adam Bona has called on the Speaker of Parliament to institute a probe into the conduct of the economic and organized crime office Ioko in the ongoing controversy regarding the stash of money found in the house of former sanitation minister Cecilia Dapa. According to Bonan, Ioko simply wanted 
for the warrant covering the withholding of the money by the OSP to expire and handed the cash back to Madame Cecilia Dapa without any effort to investigate the issue. In a video posted on social media, the security analyst made a bipartisan parliamentary probe into, um, um, said a bipartisan parliamentary probe into the matter will help to unearth the truth about Iyoko's conduct in the matter and other happenings at the anti-fraud office. I am calling on the right honorable speaker of parliament to institute the probe into the Cecilia de Parkash saga. I have a feeling Iyoko is not telling us the truth. I now can say with certainty that Iyoko has also become the headquarters of corruption. <laughs> So the mother serpent of corruption has a new headquarters, and that is Iyoko. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The mother serpent of corruption now has a new headquarters, and that is Iyoko. My brother, my sister. Hey. The former special prosecutor, who I prefer to call the special pretending braggart, Allah missy Amidu, my brother, my sister, ran out of the office of the special prosecutor in broad daylight, sweating like a pregnant donkey. If you don't want the word donkey, use ass. My brother, my sister, quickly, he ran out and called the president all kinds of names. The biggest of which was the mother serpent of corruption. I saw that as cowardly. You have the power to do things. Expose the president. Expose your frustrations. Let the whole world get to know that you moved here and it was blocked. You went here and it was blocked. You went there and it was blocked. But the letter writer that we had as a special prosecutor, my brother was more interested in writing epistles in the days of uh, the bible he would have become alamisi the writer of the bible now that we are reading john matthew we would have also read alamisi chapter 1 verse 2 biblical writer he ran out without achieving anything then we are kisi jabing the most ostentatious OSP of the world. He wants several millions worth of cars so that not even mosquitoes will touch the car and survive. They should die. Bullets could never penetrate this. He wanted his plates that he was eating from to be bulletproof. My God. At the end of the day, at least he achieved better than the braggart Allah misi amidu today my brother my sister Adam Bona says that Iyoko is the headquarters of corruption hallelujah since when Iyoko has been here pretending to be working all they do is to run after people's cars and make noise today let us look at who the boss of Iyoko is. Do you know her? It's a she -o. How many of us know the boss of Iyoko? Her name is C.O.P. Mamiya Tiwa Ado Dankwa. Oh, what a beautiful name. These are the names that I love. No English or so-called Christian name in there. Mamiya Tiwa Adodankwa. Very beautiful woman. I met her once. We sat down and had a small conversation. What is her background? Can we go into her background? I hear she studied finance. She is now the boss of Iyoko. That is supposed to be engaged in investigations. May I know the investigations, should it only be financial or it goes beyond that? Does she have assistance? 
who also have the knowledge into other such investigations should the need be should i put this aside and go deeper this was the woman who told the whole ghana that the takradi girls had been located in fact oh we have located the takradi girls and very soon we will reach out to the families of these girls with good news and we all clapped after there was so much pressure to deliver some temporary girls had gone missing three of them and we all went numb from the way the investigation had become so icy icy cold my god have mercy hear this normal brethren quickly madame tiwa actually visited the families in fact she actually located the girls but not alive dead she gave the bones to the family the family expected good news but for her this was good news after all we have brought you bones for you to bury especially when we live in a country where the tourism ministry is only interested in funerals so we brought you the bones of your daughters organize huge funerals that will draw tourists into the country you can sell sobolo and asana and make money for the nation we have brought you the bones of your loved ones so that at least you can hug the bones and say minubeko minubeko yeah minubeko my brother what is the track record of madame tiwa how did she rise to the level of being the Ioko boss? I'm just asking questions. Was it political? Yes, it could be. Especially that she bears the surname of the president. We are told that she's not a member of the president's family. But at least they have something in common. The, the name May I ask the last question? If she got there on political grounds, machinations, shenanigans, and underpinnings, may I ask, is she competent? I spoke with some police people, and all of them said, Chia. As to what Chia means, I may have to talk to the former president. John Dramani Mahama. And I hope nobody asks me who said Chia. My brother, our nation will never develop if we don't seal the loopholes of corruption. And if Iyoko is one of the biggest to deal with this, and we are toying with this, my brother, economic and organized crimes, whatever. Adam Bona says that it has become the headquarters of corruption. Can we investigate this? Can we draw him closer so that he will give us more insight into what he says? As for the Cecilia Dapa issue, the least said about it, the better. The president prophesied, Prophet Nana Adodankwa Kufuado, he told us that this will come to nothing. The woman will be exonerated. And it has come to pass. What a prophet. His words never drop to the ground. My name Black Rasta is been the Black Pot. <laughs>